Hi friends, I am Chandrasekhar here, as you know, and this is the 16th in our series of lectures on the Varga Chakra. Varga Chakra, which are called in English as a division of chakra. I mean, I need not tell you this, but <laughs> I have a habit of repeating things, uh, thinking that maybe somebody will join at a later time, and those who have been with me for so many, I mean, maybe 250, 300 uh, lectures, they know all these things. But still, it is better to be. Hmm, uh, to make people aware who is speaking. So, this is 16th in the series of lectures. This is about what is called as Akshaveda or D45 in English. In Sanskrit, it is Akshaveda. Akshay is 5 and Veda is 4 and reverse them, and that is how uh, the <coughs> uh, letters are read. This is called as the Bhuta Sankhya system of. Encryption or shortening of the short handing in, in Sanskrit. So, <clears throat> what is Akshaveda? We know that in D45 means there will be 45 divisions of a Rashi. Each division will be uh, indicated by some uh, Rashi and it will have some Lord and so on and so forth. So, it is almost like Namasha or <clears throat> that is a D9 and other things. Otherwise, the system is similar. So, uh, what does Parashara? You know, I am a bit old fashioned guy. So, I always, uh, before saying something about a, a D chart or anything in astrology, I generally try to depend on the uh, sages. Uh, that way, this is called the fifth harmonic. And uh, if we look at it from that point of view, maybe father's lineage could be seen from this. It's not that it cannot be seen, it can be seen. But, as far as Parashara is concerned, he says, Akshavedam Shake Chaivur, Shashtam She Akhilam Ikshayet. That means from D60 Shashtam She and Akshavedam She, you can see everything. Uh, which in a way implies you can even see what is in the D1 chart from the D60 or D45. Uh, we already dealt with D60 uh, earlier. The system is to take the Shodosha Bala, I mean, what? 20 point strength, uh, in which one out of the, the six way strength, seven way strength, and 10 way strength, and the 16 mm, Varga strength. And wherever uh, any uh, Varga chart or T chart gains maximum point, I am choosing that uh, Varga or, or that uh, strength. Here it is 16 Varga strength because in earlier Varga, D45 does not appear at all. So he has maximum strength. The idea is from that strength, we will understand uh, if we consider that one as the strength of the chart, uh, you know, the planet. In that particular D chart, the influence of uh, uh, that uh, particular D chart would be more as compared to others. <clears throat> so I'll uh, share the screen with you as, as usual. Uh, I mean, <coughs> we are again looking at Mr. Warren Buffett's chart only, as has been our practice to keep things simple one and to be, I mean, so that we can't run away from and, and use the same principles. So here you can see, as usual, on the left side of the screen is the natal chart of Mr. Warren Buffett. On the right, it is the divisional chart the uh, what we call as the d45 or akshaveda you will find there are many similarities even including from the lagna the ascendant the chart has uh, uh, quite a few similarities we can say uh, here of course we know in the Velga chart we look at the what we call as the uh, uh, rashi drushti the aspect of rashis and Similar aspect being cast by the planets occupied this. So here we see that this is a dual lagna. Mars is the ascendant lagna, and Mercury, Moon, and Saturn it aspect because all the dual rashes aspect each other. So influence of all these planets will be there if you go a bit to the left of it, barring Jupiter. All uh, I mean, if we look at it from the point of view of the Rashi aspects, they aspect each other by Jupiter. If we look at the 
Graha Drushti, as they call it, the planetary aspect in the D Eva chart, then even then Saturn and Mars have connection with it. So you will find some similarities, some sort of some differences. And as I say, the divisional charts only give the flavors, uh, the slight underlying flavors instead of anything else. And here we can see, and we will always go by the Karakas and the Bhavas and the Bhava Lords, etc., etc., planets sitting there to analyze. And what we see from the D45 chart. Okay. We can see what is his career. So Mercury aspects the 10th house. He is also one of the Karakas of the 10th house, as you know, Jataka Parijas has four Karakas. And anyway, that is a uh, different point. But, uh, and its influence will be there, Moon will influence, Mars will influence, and Saturn. Because aspects you, should, you can uh, treat as the influences of the planets on a particular bhava or a particular uh, section of one's life, a particular part of one's life. Here it is the 10th house. So, uh, we see his career and machines represented by Mars is aspecting Moon, the liquids again aspects, the 10th house, Mercury, the trader, and Saturn. As I am fond of you, know, right? I am fond of calling him the Karaka for you know, uh, share market or anything where there are many small things and you have to understand the connection between them and uh, uh, let us say analyze them or, or data uh, analysis etc etc when you sit at one place and do things based on the strength of your brain rather than brawn so all those things are looking he also of course any speculation is connected with Saturn and uh, therefore you can see his uh, life and now we know everything about it he indulged in machinery, uh, he, he, he uh, had even the gambling machines, uh, or, or what is called as the uh, uh, different type of machines he fitted there in, 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 in the restaurants and uh, uh, then earned from it when he was uh, younger. And later on, he went into the Coca-Cola. His maximum holding is in Coca-Cola, you know. It's a liquid, it's a trade form. Mercury is trading, pure trading. He, he also indulged in trade. Look at his life and you will find out everything coming out there. Isn't it? And so we can make out, okay, this is his area. Then in the ninth house, we see Rahu at Ketu with Venus. Now, Rahu creates illusion and he is also good at research which anyway was part of oh, Mr. Buffett's <coughs> way of working. Uh, Venus is Lord of the Sevens in the D45 chart, so you can understand that that Lord <coughs> is coming under influence of Sun. The Cardinal Rashi is occupied by Sun. He aspects obviously uh, Rahu, Ketu and Venus and vice versa. <coughs> so what happened was he actually acquired a textile company, as you know, and it did not do well as a uh, textile company, it was converted into so we, we If we look at education, what is happening in the fourth house, we look for graduation, and second for the high school level uh, stuff, and fifth for higher education, I mean, beyond graduation, which means in India we call it graduation, in England everything, I mean, Western part, everything is called as graduation. Even the high school graduation is called, but this is college graduation. And anything about that, or any additional knowledge that you acquire, is all seen from the fifth house, and extremely higher knowledge will go to the ninth house. I think we have talked about it in, in our, uh, in my lecture on the uh, Hora chart, the first lecture perhaps. Uh, not the Hora chart, the Kshetra chart. Varga Kundali chart, uh, as I can call it. The first lecture in this series. I must have talked about it. If not, <laughs> uh, here it is. And so, what is happening here? It did not do well. See, Rahu Ketu can take away energy of any planet that they conjoin. It did not do well and it can be in a different form. So, it was the Berkshire Hathaway was originally a textile uh, company which was converted into 
the uh, investment company that which is known more for uh, in this time. Now, <coughs> see the Rashi where sun is aspecting is in the port Rashi. You can, you can understand. This connection with the 11th house is very obvious because he aspects Venus who happens to be the lord of the 11th. And of course also lord of the 6th. So, uh, hard work is there. Father is also there. And gold or government. And he did deal in uh, Gold. Uh, there was something like he also dealt with in the foreign exchange, uh, indicated again by Rahu. And uh, so all those things were there. Then what we, the, the thing that I, I wanted to tell was he wanted to uh, not continue with the college graduation. But because of his father's interest, he again took it. See, Mars is aspecting the fourth. We were talking about it. And there is some change there. So he changed his, I mean, he was in college, he attended two different colleges, uh, changed his focus in the, whatever he was learning. He was more interested in learning about investment and other things, as can be seen by Saturn aspecting the fourth house again. We are talking about, I mean, otherwise also he would be aspecting because in uh, planetary aspect, it would be the tenth house aspect. Here we are talking about the Russian. So, he earned from many sources, you can see. Mother is also represented by them. Is there anything wrong? Yeah. Mars aspects it. Moon, the character of mother is in the fourth house. Saturn also aspects it. And his sister, Doris, Doreen, revealed that uh, their mother was a... Uh, she would say... Emotional... <laughs> Uh, what I can call it. Uh, she would emotionally abuse you. This is what his sister is. Mother of Mr. Warren Buffett. He was also not very much attached to his mother. He was attached to his father. That is all on record. You can go on and check on the internet. Uh, and then what about uh, progeny again? So, fifth house is house of progeny, then the seventh and then the ninth. And he did have three progeny, but ninth house is also, uh, you know, progeny of the sun, the fifth from the fifth. And there Ketu is there. And he almost literally disowned the adopted daughter of his uh, last son, Peter. Uh, the name of his granddaughter was Nicole, and he gave the reason because she revolted and uh, she joined some movement which he did not like, etc. So, here it is in a nutshell. What about his health? Earth Bhava, we look at it, isn't it? We see Jupiter posited there, Jupiter rules over glands, and <coughs> Jupiterian Rashi itself is aspected by Saturn and Mars. Uh, some growth should be there, that is the anal area, and he did have <coughs> cancer of prostate. But you know, here lies the beauty of you know looking at various aspects. Lord of the Lagna, Lord of the Ascendant City, the so generally gives good health. Whatever planet is there, he will also have his say, so that planet will cost something about. Uh, or some gland or something which is posted in that area. Now, it could also be, of course, sometimes hereditary and diabetes. That I don't know. You can find out he might have had that also. And <clears throat> but Lord of the uh, Ascendant going to the eighth house generally gives him a long life. Uh, you can see that Lord is anyway exalted, so he has strength and he is in the eighth house. That person is also very much interested in going into deep research, which had been in his investment business. Uh, you go through his, uh, you know, my life story, which is all available on the Wikipedia and so many sources, and you can find out. Then, because of that Jupiter, though he got cancer of the prostate, he was cured relatively very early. 
and is still you know active he is about i think 93 or something like that uh, i always give the his birth details in those the down below section so that you can read it, uh, and cast the chart yourself and find out everything about so this is how it works out this will always be a short lecture because we are just trying to find out some uh, uh, as i can uh, as i like to call them some sort of uh, flavors we can also see from the fixed rashi rahu ketu and venus are also aspecting the second house of family and uh, as i said there was some misunderstanding with the granddaughter etc again venus is conjunct rahu and that you have to remember and mars aspects the seventh house we are talking about rashi aspects please understand that mercury and moon also aspected and was there something unusual venus is there venus is the karaka for spouse yeah his uh, uh, wife susan wanted to pursue her career shifted to Fra san francisco but introduced her to astrid her friend uh, to take care of mr warren, warren buffett they were together uh, he did not tie her susan remember that saturn in the seventh house generally holds on to things when susan died i think around 2004 or something like after that he married astrid who was his companion all the way and she was introduced by susan and some people say that is what she had told us to that when i am no longer there you marry him i don't know whether it is true or uh, false but uh, ultimately this is what happened and after that they met so you guys see all that non traditional thing of rahu coming up to venus and something unusual coming mercury who is also a kumar uh, some people also call him uh, natikaraka he is natikaraka indicator of relative he can also sometimes represent um, you know friends uh, and uh, see the 11th house represents friends its lord is venus with rahu and ketu so something unusual in friendship but of spouse okay. so because uh, uh, venus is the karaka first and that is how we try to understand certain flavors of it that is business would be variable nobody uh, uh, i mean i do not even want to emphasize on it but look at how many businesses he built his core business of investment is anyway variable because shares go up and down and all this can be seen here Uh, influence of his father on him. He, he actually looked up to his father. His father was a Congress one, as you can see. <laughs> a ninth house lord son is in exaltation in D forty five, and with uh, positional strength in the fifth house, and you can uh, understand why. But with mother, he had problems, and this is explained from D forty five, not directly from the D one chart, because Venus and Mercury aspect. the fourth house there so there is a reason why we can make it out uh, but that i have already dealt with in the uh, first lecture and so my dear friends i shall take your leave and a very good night and this is the last in the series of this lecture uh, you can go on giving me suggestion about anything else that you want me to talk about mm. or I mean, there are so many lectures of mine now, uh, but uh, there is always something. If if I know that and if I use it in practice, I will talk about it. because I don't want to just go on theorizing and and talking about something which I don't myself practice. As I always say, I use D one and D nine for most of the predictions, unless there is something which makes me think that uh, something is missing or I am not able to find out something. Then I go to the divisional chart. and so my friends uh, what i'll do is first uh, stop this share because uh, oh, this is the last of the lecture so i want to talk to you directly anyway i do to actually i always say this is a conversation not not a lecture and uh, you have been with me for so many days i have been patient with uh, hearing my lectures and ramblings uh, in old age one does that and i am no exception And so I shall take care of you. A very good night.